Hey everyone, my name is Monty and I'm a pastor here at Meadows Church. And I just wanna thank you for joining us today. Wherever you're watching from, wherever you're listening from, you are welcome. And we're just believing that God is going to do something supernatural in this message. So again, thank you and God bless you. Like I said, my plan today was not to be here today. Like, it was not expected for me to be here today. And you might be asked, well, Casey, when did you actually find out that you're going to be at Meadows Church? And the answer is yesterday at 10 a.m. <laughs> I, I get a phone call at, at 10 a.m. from Monty. I missed the call. I, I, my son had my phone, and that was the truth. But the actual truth was I was actually taking a, a 10 a.m. nap. Like, don't judge me yet. I have a one-year-old, plus, I, you know, it, it this doesn't just happen overnight. Like, this takes time. It takes effort. So don't judge me for taking a 10 a.m. nap. But I was, I was taking this nap. I get a call from Monty saying he's not feeling well. He's getting tested. And, hey, you might need to fill in for me. So here I am today as it fits just perfectly into this series you're in about being blindsided, right? And, and ultimately, it's like, I don't know about you, but in life, have you ever felt like Bilbo Baggins? Like, I don't know if we have any Hobbit fans here, but if not, I'm sorry. Watch the movie, please. But the first one's an unexpected journey, right? This life, I don't know about you, but for you, but for me, it's definitely been an unexpected journey. Even to get to here right now, it's been so unexpected. Just to fill you in about the Hobbit and what it's all about. Like, there's this Hobbit named Bilbo. He, and if you know, like, Hobbits, they don't, they don't like adventure, they like comfort, they like, like doing the same thing, and, and they don't want to go outside of where they're from. But here this, this hobbit ends up going with these dwarves to help them recover their home. And so all of a sudden this unexpected journey happens, and this, all kinds of crazy stuff happens on this journey. Some bad things, some crazy things, but they keep moving forward because there's an end goal. There's a destination they're striving for to get to, that no matter what they're going to face, no matter what they do face, they keep moving forward, right? And it's an, an unexpected journey. That's the title for today is an unexpected journey. Say that with me. Say unexpected journey. I believe we are all on this journey, and there's going to be things that come up that are unexpected. Now, just to set this up a little bit, like, I have no idea how any of you got anywhere prior to GPS. Like, I don't get, like, how did you do it? Like, I have no idea. Like, I remember my mom had to print off maps. She had to, like, go to MapQuest, and she printed off. But even prior to that, I have no idea. Like, did you guys ever leave? Like, if you're, you know, older than GPS has been around? Like, I don't get it. Like, how did you? I'm, I'm terrible with, it, with directions as well. Like, so, like, I would not survive. I'd be lost. I'd be gone. I have no idea where I'd be going, right? And just for a little, a little history lesson, like, GPS has not been around for that long. In 1957, the Soviet unions, they, they launched Sputnik out in the, in the, in the universe to, to circle the globe. And then from there, some MIT scientists say, hey, what about this positioning system that we could use to pinpoint places? Shortly after that, 1959, the military grabbed a hold of it. And it really wasn't until about 1989 that GPS has started to make their appearance in the U.S. market. 2001 comes about, that's when it truly started hitting big time, there's more GPS systems, and today, everybody has it, right? If you have a cell phone, you have a GPS, right? Then, yes, praise the Lord is right. If you have a cell phone, you have a GPS. But the key to a GPS, right, is you need to know the destination. A GPS does you no good if you don't know where you're going. Like, you need to know the destination to have the pathway, the, the directions to get there. And for me, like, I need that GPS because there's sometimes I know where I want to go, but I don't quite know how to get there, right? And I'm thankful that with GPSs, it gives you several different options, right? And I'm thankful, hey, here's the quickest option. There should be a picture showing that, like, hey, this is very familiar. Like, which, which direction do we want to go? Which pathway do we want to take? So thankful for GPSs today that have done that. Also thankful that GPS has had this rerouting feature, right? <laughs> rerouting, I don't know about you, but if you miss your turn, that happens a lot. Sometimes they might say recalculating, recalculating, and that gets annoying, so I turn the sound off. But I, I, I find my way back to the pathway because of that. Uh, but thankful for GPS, but there's some people here that you'll do exactly what the GPS tells you. There's a, there's a little picture coming up here, I believe, that this is probably more like you. Uh, hey, the GPS is telling me to do this, and I'm gonna do it no matter what. 
right? The GPS is telling me there's a road, so I'm going to take it. If we have any office fans, this is you, right? Like, you turn right, but there's a lake going that way. Like, but why would I, like, the Jeep, why would the machine lie to me, right? I'm going to keep going that way. But some of us are like that. Maybe you know someone here that are, like, don't know directions that well also. And maybe, like, they need GPS, and they will not leave their house without someone there with them to direct them. But for me, GPS is key. I need it in my life. So most of the time, I don't know where I'm going. There was a, a time in college. I, I went to college at the University of South Dakota in Vermilion, and I was going to visit, visit my sister in Marshall, Minnesota. She was going to school there. And I'd been there a couple times, so I had a general idea of how to get there. But once again, I relied on my GPS to get me there. And so it's in my phone. It's plugged in. I'm driving along. It's later. It's a little foggy. And of course, the one thing I forgot to bring along with me was my charger for my phone. <laughs> so here I am cruising along, not paying attention to my phone, but all of a sudden it dies. I'm outside of Brookings. If you've been to Marshall, it's not that far away from Brookings. But here I am driving. I know the destination is Marshall. All of a sudden something unexpected happens, and I don't know where to go. I have a general idea. I need to start turning north sometime, but I don't know when that is. It's dark. It's foggy. And this is one of those moments I'm like, oh, God, please help me. I, I need you now more than ever because I have no idea where I'm going. So I take a couple turns, realize that's not the way to go, so I have to go back around. It's, I'm definitely going on this unexpected journey, but all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I see this van turning. Like, it was almost, like, almost kind of freaky, like this van just shows up out of nowhere. It was definitely like an, I, I, it's an angel to me because I see this van turning. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to follow this van. Probably maybe not the smartest thing I've done, but it actually worked out this time. So I don't encourage, I'm not telling you to do that. Like if there's a van drive, don't just go follow it. But in this circumstance, in this situation, I chose to follow this van. This van got me to Marshall. And once I was in Marshall, I knew where to go. So I'm thankful for God for doing that, for showing me that. But once again, like the destination is important and the path that we take might change. As we're sitting here in, in 2020, a lot of our pathways have changed. Right? We face a lot of things that have caused us to pivot, which is the, the 2020 word of the year, right? To pivot, to be rerouted. And today, more than ever, and I believe it's not just for today, but going forward, how we adjust, how we reroute means a lot, right? It's going to show us truly what we believe. Because I believe how we behave is based off what we believe. And when we are faced with a change, how do we respond? How do we react? How do we reroute ourselves? And right, like I said, like, with any destination, there has to be a pathway, right? If you're sitting here and you want to get out of debt, right, that's your destination, a pathway to do that is to live on a budget. If you're sitting here and you want to lose weight, that's your destination. The pathway could be to start working out or eating healthy, right? If you want to, want to stop drinking, that's your destination. A pathway to that could maybe go into rehab. If you want to grow in your faith, which is, could be your destination, a, that's, your, that's your destination. The pathway to do that is maybe get into God's word daily. If you want to start a new church, Right, that's your destination, a pathway to do this. Maybe, maybe throw some launch parties and gather people. But what happens when you have a destination in mind, but then all of a sudden, something happens. Something unexpected happens. All of a sudden, your plans change. They have to change. Right? If you're trying to lose weight and you have an accident, you break your foot. Now what? If you want to get out of debt, but all of a sudden, you have these unforeseen bills that come up. Now What? If you want to stop drinking, but you keep going out with your friends to the bars each and every night, like, what are you going to do? What's going to change that? If you want to grow in your faith and get in God's word daily, but you're not making time for, to do that, like, how are you going to change? What are you going to do? If you want to start a new church called Crossover and COVID happens, now what? Like, what do you do? Like, what happens? Unexpected things happen, and how do you respond to that? What, is, what are you going to do? And that's what I love about the hob, but that's what I love about the Bible is these stories of people that have been hit with unexpected events. They're on this journey and something happens, something that's going to change their pathway and how they respond makes a world of difference. 
makes a world of difference. And now as we sit here in, in 2020, where there's been all kinds of changes, right? Virtual learning, working from home, social distancing. There's all these changes happening. And how have you responded? How have you been behaving? And I truly believe that the best example of this for me, as I'm reading through the, books of, the book of Acts, is, is the disciples. So if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open up. If you don't have them, don't worry, it'll be on the screen as well. But we're going to take a look at Acts 1. All right, Acts 1, this is where the, a doctor named Luke is writing to us, sharing us what the actual the Acts of the Apostles and what they do and how they do it. And so Luke was actually a doctor. He was a Gentile. And he went with the apostles as the Holy Spirit was leading them. So this is him giving us a recount of what actually happened. And so it kicks off, Acts 1, verse 1, it says this. In my first book, I told you, Theopolis, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen disciples further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. So at this point in time, here's Jesus. He went to the cross. He died. Three days later, he rose from, from the dead, and he's spending time with his disciples. For 40 days, he's talking to them about the kingdom of God. He's talking to them about, about the mission, the kingdom of God, and what that is and what that means and how they're supposed to be a part of that. So here we are. He's talking about this. And then all of a sudden, verse 4 happens when it says, Once he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem. I don't leave Jerusalem now until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse 6. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him. So <laughs> they kept asking him. That means they asked him more than once. I envision this as like my son asking for a toy every single day. Like he just keeps asking. Every time we go to a store, he just keeps asking, can I get a toy, can I get a toy, can I get a toy? I, I envision the disciples doing the same thing to Jesus, right? Tell me about this. What does this mean? What does this mean? Verse 7, Jesus tells them, right? He tells them, actually the question is, Lord, has a time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? See, the disciples had a thought. They thought they knew the destination. They thought they knew the pathway to reach the destination. And Jesus is going to unpack that what they thought was not correct. He was going to reroute them and tell them truly what the destination was and truly what the destination is and how we're going to get to that destination and the pathway to do just that. Verse 7 says, He replied, this is Jesus, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So here Jesus says, he's telling them, hey, you are going to receive your GPS, which is the Holy Spirit. You're going to receive that, and your destination isn't just here in Jerusalem, right? It's, it's to the ends of the earth, so we're going to use the GPS to get this and to fulfill the mission that, that God has us on. But the key is what the disciples thought was going to happen. They thought that Jesus was going to take over the political system in Rome. They thought it was regarding the political realm. But Jesus is telling them, no, 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 no. This isn't about the political realm. This is about overcoming the government. This is about the kingdom coming. The spiritual world, the spiritual kingdom coming down to earth, right? So they had to be rerouted. They had to know there was a different pathway. It wasn't just to become this theocracy where, we, where there's a, they were going to be the chief executives and, and rule this area. No, it was about taking the kingdom of God, the spirit realm of God, and taking it to other people to fulfill the mission. So Jesus had to reroute them. He had to reroute them. And the amazing thing is, is once the disciples got this, once they understood what their destination was, nothing could stop them. Read through the book of Acts. Nothing could stop them once they understood this. 
once they received the Holy Spirit, once they understood truly what their purpose was, what their destination was, all of a sudden, when things came up, when unexpected things happened, when changes came about, challenges, when they were persecuted, when they were facing pain, whatever it was, they kept moving forward. They knew the destination, and the pathway to get there could change and would change, but they kept moving forward. And that's the same for us. It's the same is true for us. And let me unpack that more. F.F. F. Bruce says this about the question the disciples asked. The kingdom of God, which the disciples were commissioned to proclaim, was the goodness of God's grace in Christ. The disciples questioned, the disciples' question appeared to have been the last flicker of their burning exhortation of an imminent theocracy. Once again, they believed the destination of the pathway was different. They expected something different. But then all of a sudden, once they realized what their destination was, once they realized what their purpose was, all of a sudden they were on this pathway and they were going to keep moving forward no matter what because they believed in what happened. They believed in what Jesus said. They believed and how they behaved reflected that. And the same is true for us. What we believe is how we're going to behave and how we're going to react to things. So here we are with this. And, and the, the crazy thing is, even before this moment in time, Jesus, before going to the cross, he was put on trial, right? And it says this, when Pilate asked him if Jesus was this king, like, Jesus, are you a king? These people are claiming that you are a king. And he said to, the, to Pilate that his kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, his followers would fight to keep him from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But his kingdom is not of this world. So Jesus is, is unpacking that his kingdom is different. It's not of this world. It's his kingdom coming down to earth. It's, it's, a, it's a heavenly thing. It's, it's heaven coming to earth. And so once again, what happens then? If you continue reading through Acts, once they do receive the Holy Spirit, this is what, this is what blows me away. That even though they face persecution... They keep moving forward because they know their purpose. Their purpose is bigger than persecution. Even though they face problems, they know their purpose, and their purpose is bigger than the problems. Even though they face pain, their purpose is bigger than this pain. Their purpose is bigger than this pain, so they keep moving forward. And for you, for me, we're going to face things. We're going to have problems. We're going to face pain. And how we respond to that reflects what we believe in. Right? And how are we going to get through that? When something unexpected happens, what are we going to do? I guarantee you, 2020 isn't going to be the only challenging year. It has been a challenging year. It's been a difficult year, but there's going to be years to come where there's going to be challenges. That, they're going to keep coming. They're not going to stop. Jesus even warned us about this. He, he even warned us that, hey, in this world you'll face trials. Right? It says this. That in this world you will face trials. John 16, 33. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart. But take heart. I have overcome the world. He foretold us. He warned us. He preparing us that stuff's going to happen on this world. Things are going to happen. How do we respond when they do happen? When something unexpected happens, what are we going to do? And when this happens, I love what it says in James 1. When troubles of any kind come your way, consider an opportunity for, for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For your endurance is fully developed. You will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Like, if you're not a follower of Jesus, that makes zero sense. Why would I, like, why would I, like, pure joy? Are you kidding me? Being tested positive for COVID, pure joy. Losing a loved one, pure joy. No sense at all, right? Losing your job, how can I consider that pure joy? But once you know your destination, all of a sudden it's not that, that big of a deal. Once you know your destination, you can consider these trials, these challenges that we face as pure joy. right? The joy set before us. Because once we realize that our time here on earth is only temporary. This is a blimp in time. Our assignment here is temporary. And once you realize your destination, all of a sudden you can consider it pure joy. Look at Jesus right before he went to the cross. Actually, in Hebrews it says this. 
Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who, initi- who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. Like, think about what he, like, if you don't know the story of Jesus going to the cross and what happened to him, it's brutal. Like, the things that he went through, the things he had to endure, like, think, think about that. He did that for you, for me. Like, he endured the cross because he saw the joy that was before him. He knew the destination. He knew what was going to come from that. He saw each and every one of you, the joy. You are his joy. And he saw that, and he kept moving forward. He kept going because he knew the destination. Because the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then he won't become weary and give up. He won't grow weary and grow up. I have no idea what any of you are going through. I have no idea what challenges you're facing. I have no idea what's going on behind your walls at home. But I want to give you hope. If Jesus is in the picture, there's always hope. If Jesus is in the picture, you can always have joy. Amongst the craziness of this world, the chaoticness of this world, you can still have peace. Jesus said that, right? If you're in me, if I'm in you, you can have peace. So you can be full of trials, full of challenges, full of unexpected things, but you can still be full of joy. You can still be be full of peace. You can still be full of his love. And we can consider it pure joy. Because because of what we face, people can see how we respond, how how we behave. And we can still praise God in the problems. We can still praise God in the pain. We can still praise God in the persecution. He is still a good God, a loving God, because he loves each and every one of you so much that he would send his son Jesus to the cross again. And he would do it again because the joy set before him. The joy set before him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite the band to come up. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to share like why I'm here today. Why am I allowed to be here today? My whole life, Like I said, it's been an unexpected journey. Like, why am I on this stage? I have no idea. I just know that I just keep saying yes to Jesus. I keep saying yes to Jesus. There's been challenges. There's been tough times. But I keep saying yes to Jesus. I keep receiving his peace, his love, his joy. And so for me to be here today, that means Crossover Church has not launched yet. Right? That could be something that could be very disheartening, depressing, obviously it's been very challenging, but I want to tell you something. Crossover Church wasn't going to launch, wasn't going to get started just to start a church service on Sunday mornings. Like, that was not our destination to begin with. So it, does this surprise me that we haven't launched yet? Yes, it has. We haven't been blindsided, yes, but that wasn't our ultimate destination anyways. Our destination was never just to start a Sunday gathering. Our destination is to help people cross over new life in Christ. Does a church service, is, is that a part of that plan? Yes, it is. There will be a day we'll launch a church service. There'll be a day we gather on Sundays. But just because it hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean we're going to stop. Doesn't mean we're not going to continue on forward with what the mission he has for us. We know our destination. The pathway is definitely uncertain right now. It is so uncertain. But I know this. God will build his church. God will continue to draw people to him. I believe the harvest is still plentiful. There are people that are hurting. There are people that are hopeless. There are people that don't know Jesus. And as the church, are we going to stop doing what we're supposed to do? Just because because we can't gather on a Sunday? What happens if all of a sudden the government says, hey, you can't meet on Sundays anymore? Does that change our destination? Our destination was never just gather on a Sunday. That was never the purpose. It was a part of the pathway, yes, but it was never the destination. It was never the purpose. So us, as believers, if that's you, what does that mean? How do, you, how do we think differently? How do we act differently? How do we behave regardless of not being able to meet on Sundays? And if you're not a follower of Jesus, we're so glad you're here. I want you to know 
that you are loved, that you are on a pathway, that today may be the day that your pathway changes, that no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've done, there is hope for you, your sins are forgiven, and that you are so, so loved. And that's the good news of Jesus. This is the, the destination, this is the pathway that Jesus sent the disciples on. The mission was to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Now Jesus came to earth, he died on the cross, three days later he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. That he would be the bridge to connect us back to God. That when we fall short, we fall away from God. But when we say yes to Jesus, all of a sudden things change. Doesn't mean life gets easier, but how we go through life changes. So maybe today you're, you're experiencing something uncertain. Life isn't going as you expect or planned. You've been trying to do things your way, and it's not working out. I ask you to just ask the question, where are you at spiritually? Do you know Jesus? Is he a part of your life? That no matter what happens going forward, that you can still have peace. And I believe apart from Jesus, that's not possible. I believe that on this earth, we will experience hardship. We will experience challenges. Things will not go as planned. But as long as Jesus is on the throne, as long as you are in a have a relationship with him, you can get through anything. Because once again, this is not our home. This is temporary. And you need to consider what happens after this time is done. After our time here on earth is done, what's next? Ask the question. And for us that do have said yes to Jesus, that would call yourself a believer, that would say, I'm here to follow Jesus, once again, how are we living when stuff happens? Jesus said, right, you'll know my disciples by the way they love. How loving are we being? If our destination is to be a follower of Jesus, the pathway to that is to love. When unexpected things happen, are you still loving? When things don't go your way, do you still love unconditionally? All right. Our, our, our God is a giving God. But when, when times get tough, do we not be as generous anymore? Do we stop giving? Out of our abundance, most all of us are living in abundance, no matter what your situation is, do we still give faithfully? To be more like Jesus, to be more like our Heavenly Father, is to be a giver, to be generous with our time, our talents, our resources. To do that, do you hold on to your things or do you let them go? Knowing that you don't get to take them with you anyways. So here on earth, we will face challenges. Here on earth, you will get rerouted. But if you know the destination, you can get through it. No matter what you face, no matter what valley you're in. And I ask you and I implore you, find out what the destination is. Are you truly living out your purpose? Do you know what that purpose is? And if you know that purpose, does it help you get, help you get through the stuff you're going through? Because once again, what we face impacts us. Is it a negative way or a positive way? Do we truly allow the things that we face, the challenges that we face, to mold us into who God wants us to be? And I truly believe if we give up on our destination, if we give up on our purpose, someone's going to miss out Someone is not going to know who, who our Father is because of us not going through that challenge. If we give up on our purpose, we give up on not going to our destination just because we're being rerouted, just because it's not the way we expect it to go, someone's going to miss out. Someone's going to miss out. So the key to all this, if there's a takeaway, if there's anything that you should take away from this, is when you face a challenge, when you face a change, focus on the destination. When you face a challenge, when you face anything unexpected, focus on the destination. Focus on the destination. Jesus, focus on the destination to be at the right hand of the Father. Because he knew the destination, he could endure the cross. What about you? What about you? When you face something unexpected, when your pathway is about to change, do you know the destination? Do you know your purpose? 
and when things happen, when things change, will you keep moving forward? Will you consider it pure joy? Will you consider it pure joy? Let me pray for us. Father God, this message is more for me than anyone else. I know this year has been challenging, but not just this year. Life is tough. I think of my own life. Parents divorced when I was younger. All the decisions I made that made my life harder. The ups, the downs of life. This life is hard. It's challenging. But you are a good, good God. And it says that you can use all things for your good. So Father God, I just pray that whatever challenges we're facing today, reveal to us how you can use that for your good. If we're struggling with addiction, know that we can overcome that with your help, with your power, and our story can help someone else. If we're struggling in our marriage, give us the power to to restore that, to want to restore that, because our story then can help someone else restore their marriage as well. So Father God, whatever we're facing, if we're we're struggling because we lost our jobs, open up doors, knowing that we can endure this, that we can consider it pure joy because there's an opportunity coming forward. Open that door for us. Reveal to us what's next. Father God, you are so, so good. This journey we have here on life is short. It's unexpected, but it is short. And I'm thankful that you are so, so good, that you sent your son Jesus for us, who is willing to endure the cross, who is willing to give his life for each and every one of us so that we could have a home, a place, an eternal home with you in heaven. So Father God, if there's anyone here today that have not said yes to you, I just pray they ask themselves why. What's holding them back? What's preventing them from giving themselves to you wholly and, and wholeheartedly? And Father God, just open up that door for them. Let them know that we're here for, to support them, to help walk with them. And everybody here, whatever challenges they're facing, they have a church family that loves them, that cares for them, and that is here for them. That we're not supposed to go through this life alone. Not only are you here for us, no matter what, but we have people here in this church that want to walk with people. So don't do life alone. And Father God, no matter what we're facing, no matter what challenges come our way, if we focus on the destination, if we focus on the purpose you have for each and every one of us to know you and to make you known, Father God, we can endure anything. We can consider it pure joy as you shape us and mold us and transform us. So Father God, help us see every challenge, every change as an opportunity to grow closer to you, as an opportunity to praise you. Because no matter what happens around us, you're still good. You're still for us. And we thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody says, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. But don't stop there. We want to invite you to be part of our Meadows family. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our Meadows YouTube channel. That way you don't miss a single video, update, or message. And not only that, share this message with a friend. I encourage you. So many people are looking for hope and encouragement, and you and I have the ability to bring it to them. So again, thanks for watching, and God bless you.